Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Golgothan, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, in this episode, I plan to take this little satellite guy to the moon this time. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm actually going to pop this over here. I'm going to take this engine off, and I'm going to put on this atomic rocket motor. Boom, put that on. That is a much more efficient engine. Um, hopefully that is enough with this fuel tank to get us. Maybe I should put a little more fuel in there. Throw one of those guys on there. That should hopefully be enough to get us to the moon and in orbit around the moon. Put our launcher back on there. I want to get the payloader mod. It's a mod that allows you to basically copy, like I could take, oops, I could take, oh, I missed it again, this whole section of rockets here and make it my, uh, make it my launch vehicle and then have like all my top stuff and then just load up payloader and bring in this launch vehicle and clip it onto my, the rest of my rocket. It's a pretty cool mod. I really want to try it out, but I haven't used it yet. Alright, so here we go. It's basically the same rocket we launched before, or the same satellite we launched before, except with some uh, minor changes to the launch vehicle. Launch. And I want to make sure that we launch during the day this time. Um, normally we launch at night, and then you can't see half the stuff. Alright, so the easiest way for me to do that is now that we're stable, I can time warp. Time warp until the sun rises. As you can see, I got uh, a flag with uh, our actual logo on it now instead of the Packers. As much as I love the Packers. Alright, let's go planet. Come on, sun. S we're going to go right at sun up. As soon as the sun rises, we're going to launch. Where's it going to rise from? I think right there. There it is. All right, and we shall launch throttle up. SAS on. In three, two, one. Yeah. I'm hoping that this isn't as loud for you as it was before. Uh, I lowered the volume of the of the rockets. But there's no guarantee that it's going to be much quieter. Watch the sun rise. Alright. Interesting. Apparently, uh, Virgin Galactic is going to be doing a survivor-like reality show where the winner uh, the winner gets to go to space. I want to go to space. All right, so we want to go at a 90 degree heading, 45 degrees. This will get us into an equatorial orbit. We need to be in an equatorial orbit to be able to get to the moon. Um, but anyways, yeah, it looks like the show is called Space Race and is one of three space-based reality shows that could be gracing our screens. Interesting. But I want to go to space. I, don't, I wonder, so it's going to be survivor-like. I wonder if it's going to be more like manly survival, more survival survival as opposed to like social survival. There's our base. And we can't see the moon because I believe the moon is behind us. Somewhere. Otherwise it would be Somewhere on that line. And it is not, obviously. Oh, yeah, move this. Move our nose down. Come on. Bam. 
Okay. Send ourselves right into the sun. All right, we're almost at our appropriate velocity. Just keep lowering the nose down. So that may not be good. We'll see. I was hoping to have more more fuel left at this point. Let's see what happens. I should have done my math better. Looking at our delta V numbers in hindsight, they may not have been high enough. That's fine. If we fail, we'll just go back and we'll upgrade our rocket, make it a better have it give it a little more delta V, a little more power. This is actually this this burn right here is beautiful. It's keeping us straight at the horizon and we so if I kill it now, we're almost out of the atmosphere already. And we've got our apoapsis at 81. Which will go down just a little bit as we Oops as we get uh, out of the rest of the atmosphere. Actually, we should be out of the atmosphere now. So, yep, 81411 is going to be our final apoapsis here. And now I'm not going to use a maneuver node for this because I've got these numbers here. I should be able to just do it well, my s well enough myself. I've done, I've um, done an orbit burn enough times that I feel confident in my abilities to do it without maneuver nodes. Come on. We might be able to make it to the moon. This might actually turn out better than I originally had thought once I got this rocket off. I forget how incredibly efficient these atomic engines really are. And... cut it. Alright, close enough. Now, let's bring up the map. And there's our target. Let's set it set as target. If we want, we can do rendezvous, celestial body, moon. And it'll tell us some important information, but nothing that we really need to know right now. Nothing for going to the moon. The moon is a very easy target. So essentially, right when the moon would come over the horizon right there, I want to set a maneuver node. So just like right there. Add maneuver. Alright. And then it's just going to be a straight prograde burn. Just want to get that that new orbit into intersecting with whoop. Okay, see what happened there? But this is us being uh inter this is us uh inter encountering the moon. So we want to see if I can't get our periapsis to the moon below a hundred thousand. Now, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so we could get all the way down to... They, they say about 6,000 is about as high as you want to... or as low as you want to go, 6,000 meters, because there are some mountains on the moon that are just under that. I've actually, in a previous game... There we go, 25,000. That would be amazing right there. All right. How long till that? We got four minutes until that burn. But in a previous save, I had um, a satellite. I wanted it to as, as low as I could possibly get it to the surface of the moon. So I had it at like 5.8 kilometers above the surface, or above sea level. And uh, I had a, a light on it that would shine down on the planet, or on the, on the moon. And there was actually some pretty, um, some pretty cool... Uh, 
um, opportunities where it would come real close to the ground and you could just see the light flash as the ground underneath it is so close to it. But then it hit a mountain because, well, it was just, just too low. But it was awesome. Watching it fly over from my base that I had, amazing. All right, let's do a time warp, get us up to this node. Remember, we want to go at T minus half of the burn time, which will put us at about 45 seconds. T minus 45 seconds, we will initiate our burn. Almost there. I want to slow us down because I don't want to overshoot it. All right. Center us again. All right. In three, two, one, burn. So we need to be able to burn for a, a minute and a half straight just to transfer our orbit. You can see it getting larger and larger. And then we need to have enough fuel to stop us and leave us in orbit when we get to the moon. Oh, apparently, uh, our planet, because of the the squish the squished nature of Earth, the way it kind of um, more yeah you know it's not a perfect sphere it's more bulged around the center parts. Um, that change in shape may be what helps keep our s uh, artificial satellites from falling to the Earth. All right here we go, here we go. Or at least helps them stay in orbit with. Uh, 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 uh. Close enough. All right. Let's delete this maneuver node. Now, we begin our journey. Let's open our solar panels. Make sure that we don't have any issues with power. And now we shall watch. Cr we shall put on time warp as we leave our home planet. Yes, Earth is slightly flattened at the poles and bulges around the equator. According to the computer simulations and, analysis, and analysis by Scott Tremaine at the Institute for Advanced, Science, Advan Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, and Tomer Yavitz of Princeton University, the gravitational pull of that bulge shifts satellites' orbits over time, preventing tugs from the moon and other sources from pulling them too far in one direction or the other. If the Earth were closer to being a perfect sphere, m many satellites would just crash into the atmosphere and burn up in just a matter of months or even years. That's pretty crazy. I find that incredibly fascinating, that the imperfe imperfections of our planet is what allows us to keep the satellites that we have. Adjust our. Oops, not that way. Whoops. Whoa, too many wrong buttons. Okay. I want us to be this way. This way? This way. Like that. Okay, just like that. Boom. That's what I want to see. Alright. But I find that incredibly interesting. Um, that because of the, the shape of the planet, that is why. Um, the satellites don't get affected by the uh, gravitational pull of the moon. Goodbye, Kerbin. We shall miss ye. This satellite should never return to Kerbin. It will forever be in orbit around the moon unless find a come up with a better design and maybe find a way to bring this in. Maybe they'll impl uh, implement something, some sort of like uh, gravity, or like a, um, what are they called? Uh, what are they called? Things that they had in, like, Star Wars that, gravity beam? Tractor beam, tractor beam, that's the word I'm looking for. If they had tractor beams in this, maybe I would pull satellites out of orbit and replace them with new, better satellites. But for now, they don't have that. 
Right, how close are we? We're getting pretty close. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit more. Again, I don't wanna go too fast because if you go too fa oh, look at that. We got a Kerbal, we got a Kerbin Eclipse over the sun. That is amazing. That is beautiful. I just noticed everything just went dark all of a sudden and yeah. All right, let's bring that back up. Let's watch that sunrise from behind the planet. That's pretty cool. Though we're losing some power. It's fine. We've got plenty of power. Ah, there it is, peekaboo. I see you, son. Aha. Look at that. That's not an amazing picture. It's like heroes. Alright. We're almost there. We are almost there. Where is it? Where's the moon? There it is. What's up, big guy? Just gonna keep creeping and creeping and creeping closer. Till finally it'll lag, and that means we're affected by the sphere of influence. Look at us coming straight at it. Sphere of influence change should be coming any moment. There it is. There's the lag spike. Sphere of influence change. I'm gonna make sure I slow us down because I don't want us to go careening off away. Just set ourselves a. I forget what this is called, like an, an establishment burn or something. There's an actual term for it. Alright, let's get us right in here. Try to get it as low as possible. Double click on the celestial body to focus on it. Alright, come on. Oh! Alright, we're at 30 and 34. 29, 35, let's go this way. 32, 33. Perfect. Bam. That is exactly the burn I want. With almost... We don't want equatorial orbit, though. That's right. We don't want an equatorial orbit, because then we will just scan around the center. If we were creating a space station that we wanted to be able to access regularly, that's what we'd want to do. But that's not what we want to do here. We want a polar orbit. So for that, I'm going to use the normalizer here. See that? It Tips the orbit. Tips it. Tips it. And I just gotta do that. Till it's straight vertical. And we can also tweak with the um, retrograde as well to help keep that from going too far away. I'm gonna keep it still at about 25. Look at that! It just literally slowed us down into a little bit of an orbit. Just go this way. And slow. This is this is my trick for using the normalizing tool in this is that I hit I go over and then I hit retrograde. Over retrograde. What's that say? Two far is what that says. Alright, so now I kind of messed up this exactly. Uh, it's too f a little far away from my liking, but if I do this, it's going to tip it. So if I, if I do that, I'm just trying to bring it, try to bring in the periapsis to, yeah, there, that's working actually really well. That's exactly what I need. There. Boom. I like it. Alright. Ugh. It's gonna take us a whole minute for that burn. Gosh, I hope we have enough fuel. But at least it should make our final burn easier. Come on. Ah, I keep pushing the wrong button. Okay.
Well, I don't understand why I'm having so much trouble with this controls right now. It's like my A button doesn't work. Alright. There. It's time warp till we get just to the point where we need to burn. I'd be very upset if I didn't have my mic on properly during this whole process. 30 seconds is when we will begin our burn. I like to do I like to do my burns from here so that I can see what's exactly happening and burn. And basically what I try to do is I try to line up the new blue ones that will pop up with these yellow ones for the apoapsis and periapsis. Okay, I thought I heard a boom there for a second. I was a little worried that maybe our engine exploded or something. No, nope, we are we are doing actually pretty well on our fuel. I'm pretty happy with that. Alright. Periapsis just needs to pop out the back there. Just do a slow. X is kill engine. I don't know if I mentioned that in my previous videos. As opposed to just control, which is throttle down, X will just completely turn your engine off and stop all acceleration. Boom. Hit that. Beautiful. Now, we just gotta, at this point, just put on the brakes. Uh, oops, no, 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 no. Do not be adjusting that. Alright, so let's just do that. Try this again. Brakes until we get a flip. Flip. 29, 27. That's pretty good. I'm okay with that. Now, we just need to get our note. Oh, 16 seconds. Easily. We'll easily be able to do that. I don't know why I was so worried about our fuel. Alright, so we have to accelerate through five hours here as we approach the moon. Come on, go a little bit faster. Just again, we gotta be careful. We're gonna go all the way around to the other side of the moon. I'm actually gonna close these solar panels because I'm a little worried about them maybe, come on, there we go, um, ripping off due to the acceleration, even though we just did it a bunch, still a little worrisome, alright, keep accelerating, we'll get to the, the opposite side of the moon, almost there, slow us down a little bit, look at that beautiful rocky surface, all those craters and little pock marks and stuff like that. Can't wait to get down on the surface and figure out what this big canyon's all about, or this huge rocky area. Look how rocky and weird this area is. I wonder what that's like being down there on the surface. Maybe there'll be cathane there, and we'll have to mine it. We'll see what happens as we get ready to burn. That straight up from the from the surface. It's gonna burn at eight seconds. 16 seconds. Slow down the time warp as we're getting closer here. This is going to be completely dark now, of course. Well, there's there's Kerbin right over there. We'll watch our home as we make this final burn. Oh, missing it. Missed the mark. Alright, that's fine though. It's not super important. Here we go. And let's throttle down. Let's look. How are we doing? 39, 29. So I can burn a little bit more here. That's pretty good. I'm okay with that. 
Get rid of the maneuver node, and there we have ourselves our orbit. My hope was that it would never really be dark on the satellite, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's go all the way around to the light side so we can see ourselves before we... There we go. So let's open up our solar panels. Extend our communitrons. Disconnect our engine. And begin scanning. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to end the episode there. If you found this video educational, enjoyable, entertaining at all, please like, comment, subscribe, favorite it if you really, really dug it. Uh, I am Golgothan, and I will see you next time.